Okay. Hi. Hello. Hi, YouTube. I guess this is how we're doing this. What's going on? We're doing a tournament survival guide. Everything you need to know and prepare for for going to an FTC tournament. Because I know most of you guys have no idea what to do. We know offline is slowly coming back to the FTC. So I'm going to cover. It's kind of going to be like a, a what's in my bag episode, right? What's in Brian F's bag? We're going to break down exactly what you need to do to prepare for an FTC tournament. What you got to pack, what you got to get ready for and you know, all the, the hot tips and tricks. Let's get started here. First, the most important thing is prepping the backpack. This, this is gonna be your lifeline. This is gonna be the number one piece of equipment that you're gonna have as an FGC player. If you see me at a tournament, I'm going to be wearing a backpack at all times. I'm gonna feel practically naked if I'm not strapped with the backpack. How you load this thing up is the most important decision you're gonna make prior to going to an event. Let's go pocket by pocket here. Random assortment of Tums and Advil from a dissolving plastic bag. This is, this is the first thing you need to have, right? <laughs> Drugs, yes. The very first thing I pull out of my bag is obviously drugs. You never know when you're gonna have some heartburn. You're not gonna be eating the best. Having the emergency Tums is very important. Now you could opt to not put in the backpack. Sometimes I put it into the uh, the suitcase with the toiletry bag, but Tums, actually a lifesaver. You don't wanna have a heartburn the night before a tournament match and you can't sleep because you have heartburn. That is the number one thing you gotta avoid for sure. What else do we have in here? Oh, this, this is actually extremely important. Power bank. This one is from Red Bull Kumite. They gave these out to the competitors at Red Bull Kumite Vegas. You don't want your phone going dead. Definitely need a power bank. Keep the phone alive. You know, you're gonna be refreshing Smash GG pretty much every other minute. So you're gonna need this on hand. It's gonna save you. It's gonna be a lifesaver. Cable for the power bank. What else we got in here? Random assortment of vitamins and fish oil. As you can tell, I have not been taking these. Uh, my old badge for my job which you guys don't need to see that. <laughs> a random assortment of pennies, nickels, dimes, and currency from other countries that I visited during tournaments. Banco Central de la Republica Dominicana, right here. 50 pesos, a quarter. This is 25 pesos. You never know when you might need some. For the money matches, I mean the DR community, they, they love their money matches. All right, that's it. The front pocket, all random junk in your power bank. Now. The thing about this bag here, this is not sponsored by GT Omega Racing, but I love this bag because we've just gone through the first pocket up front, but there's many, many layers to this bag and there's lots of goodies inside. We'll keep moving on through the rest of the pockets here. This next one is getting extra messy. First off, vaccine card. Got to keep that on hand. Uh, I actually forgot that was here. Definitely important to have. Requirement for most tournaments these days. Gum. I don't know. I'm not much of a gum chewer. I don't know if you guys are but I feel like you want gum for a flight. Sometimes your ears pop when you go up into the air. Gum might save you when you least expect it. Even if you're not a gum chewer, I just feel like it's good to have on hand. Sometimes it's good for focus. You're getting prepared for a set. Might be handy to have. All right, this one is very important. Take notes on this. You need a giant ratted bundle of cheap earbuds. You're gonna lose so many earbuds while traveling and you'd never want to be caught dead on an airplane without earbuds. Make sure you have a giant ball of earbuds that you can never isolate from each other so that you never lose your earbuds and you always know that you have headphones ready for the trip. Okay, we got more gum. I, I don't even know what this is. Oh, I have one Jabali token here. This might come in handy one day. You never know. Maybe it'll let me uh, get some Chicken fingers at the next CEO instead of paying 15 bucks. More random coins here. I gotta have something. Oh. oh, Red Bull Kumite chip right there. There's several dollar coins. When did I get these? I have like four dollars in dollar coins in here. All right, that's junk pocket number two. Now we start getting to the heavy hitting stuff. Okay. For some of you, no Nintendo Switch. This is no, where I'm not that kind of guy. This video ends because you're one of the smart ones a PlayStation 4 pad. If you're one of the young bucks in the FGC and smarter than us FGC boomers, this is where the video ends. This is all you need. In fact, all this crap here, it's superfluous. I've seen tournament level players just do this. And then this is their entire getup for the weekend. This is their travel kit. This is their lifeline. This is what they packed. This just goes in their pocket. If you are that person, I salute you. 
You have made some good decisions in life. This this could have been me. I used to play on pad. But instead we got more to go. Keep that in mind. There's a there's a luxury to be had when you play on pad. Oh, this is another big one. Hand warmers. I always carry a bunch of packs of Hot Hands hand warmers. You open up the plastic. This has a, this is two pack, right? So I've already used one of them in here. When you open up the package, the hand warmer itself will automatically activate when exposed to air. This is going to be a lifesaver because those tournament venues, listen, they crank the AC more than you can possibly understand inside of these tournament venues. The AC might be blowing directly onto your hands while you're playing. It gets super chilly in venues. You will be cold, especially at a hot location. If you're like Texas Showdown in Texas, it's gonna be hot. Odds are they're cranking the AC in the venue and it's gonna be freezing in there. I have been using Hot Hands hand warmers for years now. I have a whole giant bag of them in my closet. I always throw a couple of these in my suitcase, in my backpack. Always bring them to the venue, keep them in the backpack on hand. They will save your life in a tournament. I'm telling you, you cannot play with cold hands. That's why I also advise bring a jacket. Always bring a jacket. I don't do hoodies without a zipper. Hoodies suck in my opinion. Having to pull a hoodie off of you from the bottom up, no one looks graceful taking a hoodie off. You might think you look good. You always look stupid and vulnerable. <laughs> You got your shirt pulled over your face. No concept of what's going on around you. I remember the day I swore off hoodies. I was in college. I remember being outside the lecture hall trying to take off. It was like a Nike athletic hoodie. You know, it looks cool. It's kind of fitted when you wear it, so it looks more flattering. Dude, I was struggling for a good two minutes. Two minutes to take it off. That doesn't sound like a long time when you just say two minutes, but if you're in an awkward position for more than 10 seconds, it's a lifetime. Two minutes. I could not get it off. It was so tight. The physics of it to unravel from the bottom up without completely derobing my entire body. And I was like, I'm done. I'm not wearing hoodies ever again. Anyways, bring a jacket. That's one of the major pockets in here. So in this bag, there's actually a lot more room in this pocket section here. If you have like a larger headset, someone mentioned Nintendo Switch, you can fit that in this current loadout. However, I used to do that, but really, are you really gonna play the Switch on the plane? Is it really worth taking having another item to take out when you go through TSA? If you carry one of these, then you're allowed to carry a Nintendo Switch in my opinion. If you are a fight stick Andy, you got too much weird shit that has to be pulled out of your bag and put on into separate bins at the airport. I've done it, trust me, I've done it. Okay, on to the main section. As you can tell, here is where the fight stick lies. This bag definitely comfortably fits one Quamba Obsidian, no problem in there. The Quamba Obsidian is basically the largest stick I would recommend if you're traveling to tournaments. I really like this stick, I have a, like four or five of them at this point, an obscene number of them. You want to have this easy access I would recommend putting it in the carry-on bag. Now, you can try to put it in your suitcase. I've done it before. If you're, you know, one of those people who like doesn't want to put a bag under the seat, you want to have some foot room cuz you're being a little baby, you can try putting it in your suitcase. You can wrap it up with your clothes, try to protect it. However, there is a non-negligible chance that you will not be able to take your suitcase as a carry-on. It's happened to me. I've had some tournaments where I put the stick in the suitcase and they told me to put my bag underneath the plane. And I'm telling you, from that point forward, the paranoia, it'll get to you. They can lose your bag, which means you're out of the tournament, or they can just fuck it up. So it's risky to do that, very risky. Now, like I said, this is like the largest stick I would recommend getting if you're gonna travel to tournaments. However, uh, some people have these things. I don't use this anymore for obvious reasons, but this thing, the Quamba Dragon, it's a premium stick. You pick it up the wrong way, you're gonna throw your back out. This thing is ginormous. It, it is at least, like, at least 15 pounds. If you use one of these as your primary stick, give up. Don't, don't even bother. I think I traveled one time with this stick because I had to, and it was miserable. I think I had to not pack, you know, my extra pairs of underwear and socks. This will not fit in any bag ever. When they put the stick through the scanner at security, an arcade stick looks like a bomb. All you see through the x-ray image, you see a bunch of wires tying up from the buttons. It literally looks like a bomb. This is a bigger bomb. So you gotta weigh your options here, because 
I've had my bag selected for extra screening plenty of times. They'll start talking to you about, you know, oh, I used to play Street Fighter, you know, get over here, fatality, and you'll have to make small talk with people. It sucks. Lord help you if you play some anime shit. At least I play Street Fighter. You know, I don't have to completely lie. I can just say, yeah, Hadouken. But if you play some weird anime game, they're gonna select your bag. They're gonna start talking to you about what you use this for. You're gonna have to start making up lies and excuses and they're gonna uh, notice how nervous you are. It might be a whole ordeal. So don't travel with these things. Too big. Okay. And uh, at this point, you might have thought we were done with the backpack, but there's actually more. Here we go. I also have in here a portable monitor. Oftentimes, this might not be a portable monitor. It might be a laptop. Back when we used to all play on consoles, you know, when you're traveling to events, you played on consoles. You had to bring your own setup to be able to play. Now, if you have a gaming laptop, you're uh, ahead of the curve. You know, that's that's godlike. But this is for the setup for a PS4 plus portable monitor user so that you can have your own, you know, Illuminati sets in your hotel room. It gets the job done, it's pretty good. It has this like built-in system, basically. This panel folds, it has these crimped slots here where it can support the monitor itself, has speakers on it, HDMI, headphone jack. What's the refresh rate? Ha 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 ha. Yeah, this was from an era bygone before we played on PC, before we cared about refresh rates, when we were happy playing on overheating PS4s. So that's why I have this start using this in the 2019 season so that I can actually warm up in my hotel room and, uh, you know, invite people over to play. Because oftentimes, believe it or not, guys, listen, pay a bunch of money to go to a major, fly out there, take time off work. They might not have any setups for you to play. You might only be allowed to sit down and play the video game you traveled for when it's time to play your tournament matches. And once you're done, you, you get out of pools or you're eliminated. That's it. They're using those setups for the next wave of pools. It's very common. If you've only been to Combo Breaker, you wouldn't really know about that. Combo Breaker is the king of having, you know, 24 hour venue full of setups. You actually get to play the game that you want to play. But many majors you'll go to, it's just not enough space, too many different games, not enough setups. Some days you feel like, man, I could have stayed home and played online and gotten more action in than going to a, a major. So, bringing your own setup just in case, sometimes very important. That's the case how it was at EVO. If you didn't play in tournament, you were not playing the game. Even at the event with the most competition from all over the world, bar none, it was almost impossible to get games with people um, unless you were invited to Illuminati setups, Illuminati hotel rooms. If you pass the clout check, then people will let you come in and play with them. So, make your own destiny, get your own setup. Okay. And that pretty much concludes what's in this bag. Oh wait, no, I forgot, there's more, there's more. I forgot the most important part, snacks. You will be forced to snack because you're gonna be stuck at the venue for a long period of time. You're gonna get hungry. There's, there's not gonna be many food options near you that are convenient. You can't wander away for too far because they're gonna call you for your next match. You might get DQ'd. You need to have snacks on hand, all right? So I don't have like everything I normally carry. Cliff protein bars, Cliff bars, whatever protein bars. I definitely pack a lot of these when I go. These are pretty good. They're kind of heavy. These are Lenny and Larry's uh, The Complete Cookie. They're a protein cookie. I'm doing air quotes here. Um, there's a ton of fat and a bunch of other garbage in them, but they do have some protein in them. So they're, they're pretty filling. I would not advise eating more than one of these a day. I don't normally carry giant tubs of nuts. What I would recommend is trail mix. Trail mix is the goat snack for tournaments. This will represent trail mix. I mean, you can throw some almonds into a Ziploc or whatever, but trail mix to me is the number one snack food. By far. Has your fruit, has your nuts, has some fiber in there. It'll fill you up. You need something to munch on, for sure. Because you also, you don't want to get really full before a tournament set. When you're playing a tournament, you want to be satiated. You don't want to be full. If you get too full, you're gonna you're gonna get the itis. You're gonna get sleepy. It's gonna be a whole thing. And if you're too hungry, you can't focus. It's distracting you from your play. Snacks. Snacks are key. So definitely get your favorite snacks. Don't get some candy bullshit. Don't get your your Skittles or your Snickers or whatever. Get some real snacks. Actually, if you get like a, a gummy or something, just a little bit of sugar before you play, I can see that. But you're gonna also need something to actually hold you over. Something that's not just a quick sugar boost. Get some trail mix. Sorry. On to the suitcase. I'm doing the mobile PS4 setup loadout. I will risk 
the PS4 in the suitcase. It can, it's more load bearing, it's bulky. If this thing gets crushed, you know what? Put it out of its misery. It's been coughing up along for years now. What I do is I'll wrap it in towels or just my own clothing, t-shirts. You, you load it up with the socks, one load up socks, underwear, t-shirts. It can be stuffed. You don't want to leave any space for it to rattle, basically. So if you're doing the mobile PS4 setup, I think putting the PS4 in the suitcase should be fine. You know, get a, this is a standard travel size suitcase. Don't bring some shit that's super tiny. If you're a duffel bag warrior, because you just don't give a fuck, fine. None of this applies to you. I would say just get a regular travel size suitcase. You don't need that much room in it. So that's why you can put the PS4 in here and uh, throw some stuff in here to keep it taut. Next important thing, toiletries. You need a toothbrush. This should be basics for some of you, but for others, maybe not. You need to bring a toothbrush. I carry my electric. I also carry a non-electric because I use that for uh, brushing my tongue. I don't know about you guys, but these tiny, tiny heads they have for electronic toothbrushes. Not good for tongue brushing, in my opinion. Toothpaste. If you don't know, hotels often don't give you toothpaste. That's kind of annoying. I don't know why hotels don't just include toothpaste. I guess it would be wasteful, but it's kind of annoying to me. Deodorant. Listen, I'm not like a huge deodorant guy. I don't investigate the shit that's not gonna give me armpit cancer. I kind of just buy basic ass deodorant. I hear that there's a small percentage of the population that does not have body odor genetically. That's not me and that's probably not you. So most likely you will need some deodorant. Floss your teeth. This is a dumb thing to brag about because it's not a flex, but I recently went to the dentist for the first time and I believe a decade. I think it's close to at least seven years. And they told me my gum health and my teeth were great. And I was like, hell yeah, hell yeah. And it's because I floss. When you first start flossing, you're gonna have bloody gums. It's just how it is. It's one of those things that you have to floss consistently to keep your gums not irritated, then they won't bleed. So if you don't floss now, and you're scared of seeing all the blood in your sink when you floss, if you keep at it, you will quickly see progress and you'll feel good about it. Floss, take some floss with you even on your trips. Hairbrush, I need a new one. This is disgusting. Don't look too much at this. I have some Axe pomade, pomade, whatever it's called. I use this like once every two years, depending on my haircut situation, what's going on. I probably won't use it, but daily most moisturizing lo lotion. When you go to Evo or you go to the West Coast, California, and you're not from there, what you don't know is that the air is dry as hell. When you go to Evo and you go to Vegas, it's in a desert. Your lips will crack and bleed within a day. Within one day, you will literally crack your lips and bleed and you'll be fucked for the rest of the week. This is how it is. You need to bring chapstick. You want lotion. That's for California tournaments, for Evo in Las Vegas. It is dry. It is arid. There is no humidity. You will re regret it. I'm telling you. What do I have here? Random hotel shampoo that I stole. And I guess this thing to apply shaving cream that I never use. And a mini toothbrush plus flosser that I got from the dentist. And I think that's about it. So listen, guys, that's all I had for your tournament survival guide. What you need to travel to the events. Um, I know a lot of people are excited to go to tournaments for the first time, possibly in the FGC. Um, that's just what you need to get there. Now, if you like this kind of content, you want to know what to do after you get to the event. You know, once you're at the tournament, you're, you're at the venue. How do you say hi to people? How do you talk to your favorite FGC player? How do you actually get sets going? Maybe you can do that next time. But that's all I have for this video. If you like the video, please be sure to comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I always appreciate the support and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.